What up, what up, Movementers? Welcome to another episode of Stiggy Savory Haven, hosted by yours truly, Big Stiggs, Chef Ev. Um, episode six today, we keeping it simple. As always, um, the time that I'm recording this, we're actually a week early that I've um, recorded this. So the theme for today's recipe with Mother's Day coming up on the 8th of May. I know y'all see this pretty much five days after whatever. Um, but today's theme, we're going to do a Mother's Day brunch. Um, my opportunity to pretty much start Mother's Day weekend uh, for my fiance early for her. Um, since this is her first year with our child actually here and not in her womb figured why not put the two together so i'm preparing for y'all today for this brunch something that i've been missing um since the previous job i worked at uh chef put me on to it um but home fries philly style as he liked to call it <laughs> um which uh, would pretty much be home fries with um my way i added you know bacon peppers onions and cheese to it along with um, scrambled cheese eggs. And uh, we'll have some bacon as well with it. And a nice little beverage you'll get to see at the end to always compliment a perfect brunch for the ladies, for the mothers out there. Um, so gather around, you know, this is about to be a very tasty episode. Uh, everybody's ready, set to go. Let's get to the kitchen, episode six, let's get it. All right, simple Mother's Day brunch. I'm gonna start with the ingredients. As you see, I got the garlic and herb butter with some triple cheddar shredded cheese. Got six eggs. Got some uh, low sodium bacon. You know, trying to keep the salt up now. Um, got the pepper stir fry there. Got some onions, chopped onions, and then I got two bacon potatoes, which I'm gonna chop up. So we're gonna keep it real simple uh, with this uh, brunch. And um, I keep it just like that. Seasonings, I'm just gonna stick with a little bit of salt and pepper and some garlic powder. All right, so get, we're gonna start with, um, just to get the eggs out the way, just gonna go ahead and, um, you know, break them or de-shell them. Yes, just real quick. Go ahead and crack the eggs. Set them aside. As I said, I got six eggs here. Let's go ahead and take care of those. And then once I'm done with these eggs, then I'm gonna go ahead and start dicing up the potatoes. Always just like to get the eggs separated out the way just so I can wash my hands and at least they're prepared you know you're actually getting to see the prep work normally I have the prep work already done before I do these videos but I had the time just to show you a little prep work that I do since this is going to be a quick video anyway since it's just a brunch now I'm not going to season the eggs now I'll just season them before I uh, put them in the skillet. Let me go ahead and discard the shells. All right, so now that I separated the eggs, as you see, see there's no shells in my eggs. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead to the potatoes. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna do a, a rough chop. Dice them up, you don't wanna dice them up too small. You want them nice and thick for the home fries. Uh, so pretty much they're like french fry nuggets in a way um, so I just cut them in half and then in fours before I dice them up so I started off a little amateur on the first one but the second one handled it like a professional <laughs> now once you um, as you'll see once I dice up 
these uh, potatoes. I go ahead and I set them aside in another bowl, a mixing bowl. And then I'm going to uh, put some cold water on them and let them sit because you don't want the potatoes to brown. Once you actually cut a potato and air starts getting on the inside of the potato, it'll start to brown if you don't sit in that water. And that just won't uh, be tasteful presentation wise. <laughs> so it's pretty simple. I mean, just dice up two potatoes and I don't have to really worry about seasoning or anything. Like I said, this is pretty much the prep work normally I would have this already taken care of before I would uh, record. So normally you would just see all the potato diced the potatoes in a bowl when I'm breaking down the ingredients. But this time I just wanted to let y'all get a view of me breaking down the prep work. You know, get a little behind the scenes. I guess you could say. So once I did one potato, same procedure for the second potato, and that's pretty much it. Alright, so now that we done changed views, I'm gonna go ahead and get started cooking the bacon. Now just to make it easier, this is my thing. Um when cooking bacon. I always cut the bacon in half. Um, so I just take out whatever strips I'm cooking and I just cut it in half for some reason. And like I said, it's just me, but mentally feels like I can fit more into a pan, unless I'm using a flat pan. Um, with it being half strips instead of the full strip. Also, while I'm getting this bacon going, I'm going to start, I'm going to obviously turn on the heat for the oil for the potatoes so I can get them started. Pretty much you're just going to give the potatoes uh, french fry treatment, you know, just drop them into the grease while it's hot and that's the texture I want on the potatoes before I fix them up. Later on, so I'm just gonna cook them like french fries. And that's pretty much that's it. Once that gets to going, once the oil is hot, we're gonna go ahead and drop the potatoes uh, one batch at a time. You don't want to put too much into the grease, you're gonna cool the grease down too much, and then you're not gonna get that good char on the outside of the whole fries that you want. The texture out there. Now, as you see, the bacon is gone out of the pan. You know, it's a simple, you know, pretty much elementary. You know, bacon doesn't take that long to cook. So, uh, once I cook it on both sides, I take that out. And now I'm dropping the potatoes into the hot oil. Just try it. since they're diced tomato, I mean potatoes, I'm sorry. Since they're diced, I, I don't want to you know, take too long for me to pick them out one at a time. So I use my wired spoon, scoop them up and place them in there gently so I don't have a splash back of the hot oil on myself or the stove. Try to keep it as clean as possible. And that's pretty much it. So all the seasoning and everything will come later when I start putting the dish together. The potatoes definitely. Then there's the bacon. And you get this about maybe a good four minutes, four to five minutes. All right, so at this point, I already put the second batch of uh, potatoes in the oil. Took out the first batch and set it on some paper towel so I can get some of that grease off. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking the rest of the bacon, or at least about another three strips, and I am chopping it up 
or just cutting it up, I should say. Um, I'm starting pretty much what I'm going to mix the home fries with. So doing the home fries, I'm throwing some peppers, onions in there, some cheese and bacon. So that's me cutting up the bacon there so I can get that to start sauteing, cooking. And this is pretty much when the, the rest of the meal just all comes together. So as you noticed, I didn't, I kept the bacon fat from when I was, from when I cooked the, the strips I had earlier. It's the grease still in the pan, that way it's gonna give the potatoes that good flavoring as well. Again, this is also something, uh, part of the prep work that I would normally just have done so I could just drop it right in the skillet that's already cut up. But it didn't take too long. Try to use a uh, leftover bacon I had in the refrigerator. Yeah. Now you can't keep the old stuff. You gotta use it before it expires. <laughs> So once the bacon starts, uh, you know, starts sizzling, you know, rendering, just move it around. Normally, you know, the more that you cut up the bacon, the faster it'll cook too. And now the potatoes are ready. As you see, they start to float to the top. It's a good sign, just know how to take those out. Now the good thing about these, the reason why I love home fries this way is because, as I mentioned earlier, it gives the texture of french fries, so it's crispy on the outside, but soft and moist on the inside, like, a, like some fresh french fries you would get at your favorite place. And then when you mix it with all the other stuff that you want, like I'm doing the peppers and onions and bacon, I've seen it mixed up so many different ways, but when it all comes together, it just, it's like a symphony on your palate. So I'm gonna set the oil to the side. Now I no longer need it. I'm gonna get my egg pan ready. It's like I said, this is when everything comes together. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and just season my eggs and I'm gonna scramble and get them going. Now the bacon is starting to crisp pretty well. So at this point, I'm going to start soon, start putting in the peppers and onions because they don't take long. Now I'm go ahead and grab the eggs here. Season them. So we got the black pepper. There's no real measurements involved. I mean, it's six eggs. So you don't need a whole lot of the seasoning. Just sensible amount. A little bit of salt. simple for eggs now I'm gonna add the chopped onions to the bacon So the pepper stir fry, which is just pretty much mixed bell peppers. Pepper stir fry blend, I should have said. It's just red, yellow, and green sliced bell peppers in the bag. Get it at your grocery market, grocery store, freezer section. Save you on some prep work. Now, at this point, we're just gonna let the onions and the peppers just render down once they, you know, soften up a little bit. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add the potatoes to that. And then I can season them at that point. So I can season everything together. Everything has its own taste. But while that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk these eggs. See the wrist work. <laughs> uh, so this is all pretty much primary. I mean, not primary, but elementary when it comes to cooking. You know, you need to make scrambled eggs. Simple procedure. Just whisk them up, drop them in your oil pan. So, so I see that the peppers and onions are starting to sweat a bit. And I know that they're almost at the point where I want them to be. Uh, they, had, they had some moisture from it because the peppers and onions were frozen. So I turned the temperature up a little bit to get that extra water and moisture out of the pan before I added the potatoes. I didn't want just wanted to soften my potatoes. garlic and herb butter. I'm going to use that to oil the pan for the eggs. And I'm also going to put some of that in the potatoes as well. About half a teaspoon, whole teaspoon, whichever, whichever works for you. All right, so now Potatoes can go in. I'm just gonna drop them all in there. And get them mixing everything up. Now once I mix everything up, then that's at this point I can go ahead and start seasoning. And I'm going to pretty much use the same seasoning as I used for the eggs, um, except for I am going to add a couple more things. <clears throat> so we got the black pepper. garlic powder and if you need a measurement it's pretty much about a half teaspoon each seasoning except for the salt the salt I definitely kept it at the minimum it's like a little pinch a pinch of salt Uh, just to get the herb taste in there as we, that's also coming from the butter I did decide to just jazz it up a little bit and add a little Italian seasoning to the potatoes as well get a little more herb taste into the potatoes Like I said, about a half teaspoon of garlic butter, garlic and herb butter. I'll put in the potatoes just like I did for the eggs. That's it for the butter. Lastly, the Italian seasoning, as I mentioned. It'll give us some good color as well as a uh, you know, little taste. Hit your palate a little different. That's pretty much all the seasonings I'm using for the potatoes. Once I get that a good mix, and I'll let the, the pretty much the heat do its work. Once 
once I get that all mixed up, then I can go ahead and start the eggs. Now, scrambled eggs, like I said, if you haven't ever cooked before, hopefully you have cooked eggs before, but if not, the scrambled eggs is just eggs in a skillet uh, that you move around until it solidifies. That's all it is. My house, we like cheese eggs, so I will be putting cheese in these eggs. You just want to make sure that you control your fire and your temperature. You don't want to overcook the eggs, and you just want to keep them moving in the pan so all of the eggs cook. You know, it was six eggs I was cooking there, so. Just want to keep it moving. Keep moving the eggs around as they cook. You don't want to have a big egg patty for scrambled eggs. I'm not making an omelet here, I'm just making just scrambled eggs, so just keep moving the eggs around as it cooks. You can see as the egg is cooking, it's starting to solidify, just keep moving so all of the egg yolks are cooked. That cheese melted inside. Always a home favorite. Now, once we get this, the eggs are finished. The eggs are going to finish just around the same time as the potatoes. So, so then, once this is all done, we can start plating up. And as you're cooking the eggs, you'll see like. Once you no longer see any liquid form of the eggs, and you know it's all done. Everything is solidified. That's it. Turn the fire off. And you go ahead and get uh, just a, a better view of both the potatoes and the eggs. At this point, we can go ahead and plate up. All right, so now here we are at the plating portion. Now you see I got some strawberries here. Two purposes for them, some nice juicy ones. Uh, go ahead and cut these up. One, I'm gonna use these as strawberries as a garnish for both the presentation um, of the plate as well as for the beverage, garnish for the beverage. And you know, who doesn't like eating strawberries as well? It's always a good taste. So it's a garnish that you can definitely enjoy with your meal. So, you know, simple sliding, or slicing, I should say. <clears throat> slicing the strawberry. And I'm slicing it this way, as you'll see, because I like to do like a, a fan of the sliced strawberries for the presentation on the plate. A fan of the strawberries. Just fan it out a bit. Once I slice those strawberries up, just move that over to the side. And you go ahead and plate up this brunch here. So we're going to start with the potatoes. I, as always, I don't really have like a method or set up that how I want to plate it just to make it look good that's the final um, decision when I'm always plating so I'm just gonna sit the potatoes the home fries right in the middle and I'll use my tongs just to get them all center it's presentation wise you know Next, we're gonna go with the eggs. Since they were scrambled eggs, really just tried to put some eggs on both sides of the potatoes. I was really trying to figure out how I wanted to do it, but 
just kept it simple like that. Some eggs on both sides. And pretty much just set them up like a little bed for the bacon. And we just place the bacon on top, as you'll see. Set the bacon, just gonna go ahead and just place the bacon on top of the eggs, the egg bed I set up there on each side. All right, so we're gonna grab the strawberries. Like I said, just wanna, I like to fan them out when I use them for a presentation. Just fan them out on the empty sides of the dish, just so the whole plate looks full. That's two of the strawberries. And the third one, I just take a couple pieces to fill in the empty spots, but I wanted to save a couple pieces for the garnish for the actual beverage as well. That piece wasn't gonna cut it for the <laughs> garnish, so I just ate that one. So here we go with the beverage. That skinny woman who goes out on brunch. What is the drink of choice for a brunch? And more than likely, she is going to say a mimosa. So that's what we're doing for the beverage here. A mimosa, as I called it. Because my fiance, <clears throat> wife to be, does not drink champagne. She's not a champagne fan. So instead, I got this apple cranberry sparkling cider, which is going to replace the champagne, but still give that bubbly kick as the mimosa is supposed to have, minus the alcohol. <laughs> by the third of the glass and then do the rest do orange juice some people do it the opposite way do orange juice first and then top it off I just went with the color uh, I like the color so I'm doing it my way but to each zone then we're just going to take a like I said take a slice of the strawberry garnish the glass Just the camera so you can see the full glass. There it is. And there is the brunch, Mother's Day brunch. There with the mamosa. Alright, so hopefully everyone enjoys it. Looks right to y'all. I'll come back with my final thoughts. Alright, y'all, so there it is. Um, hopefully, you know, the procedure and everything, putting the meal together and the recipe is, uh, pretty simple. Um, I thought at, at the time we're starting to make this, you know, start doing this, uh, Savory Haven episodes. Um, maybe I was being a little too technical, like giving every detail. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to be preparing, um, uh, going further is, it's really, um, because the point of this whole show is really to make cooking, um, I guess you could say, easy or seem easy to those that feel like they can't cook at all. They have little to no experience in the kitchen. Uh, maybe so they have some fear um, of cooking. Uh, just to pretty much give that courage and encouragement that uh, anybody can cook. <clears throat> You know, if you just take your time, have a little guidance. So a lot of the stuff that I will be preparing, yeah, I'll always focus on the main entree, but like a lot of the sides and stuff, and as you've seen in a couple of episodes, I'll just stick to the instructions on the package. Um, unless I really want to get fancy. So um, so I like, you'll notice, like I may not get too technical in regards to breaking down the recipe. And that's pretty much because a particular item on the video, was just cooked based on the instructions on the package and I also state that 
um, throughout the video. But final thoughts. <laughs> Just wanted to get a little disclaimer, but final thoughts. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the recipe. Um, like I said, this was a Mother's Day brunch idea. Like I said, I just wanted to really get the opportunity to celebrate my fiance, wife to be, um, pretty much a weekend. But, you know, just spoiling her and uh, just showing my appreciation. Uh, I'm bringing my baby girl into the world. So I just started with a uh, brunch and the mimosas. <laughs> uh, but uh, just complimented the meal, but this um, I don't know, it's just the, the, a heart-tugging subject when it comes to mothers with me, for personal reasons. But um, definitely, uh, I'd love to show my appreciation to all the mothers out there. Um, you're definitely appreciated for any other ones that feel unappreciated. Definitely, if anybody appreciates you, we appreciate you here, South Rec. Um, but yeah, that was the, the point of the meal. Like I said, the home fries, uh, the chef at a previous job, like I always heard the hash browns, home fries, but they were just fried potatoes. But no one broke it down to me like a Philly style. And I never had it that way. So when you put me onto it, my body was blown. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed the recipe. As I always say, um, the way I prepare a recipe, it doesn't have to be according to, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't have to be according to your palate. I make everything that I cook according to how I like things to taste. So if any seasonings that you want to change, you know, anything that you want to flip in your own way, by, by all means do so. And also let me know how it worked out. Let me know what those changes were. Maybe I would like to try it. Uh, we do appreciate comments. Uh, even if any advice, whatever. Like I said, this is only episode six, so this is a work in progress in regards to the show. Um, yeah, definitely comment. We appreciate it. Like, hit the like button. Um, notification bell. We do appreciate all of it. All of the notices in regards to people viewing these videos. Um, and hopefully within time, it'll just keep getting better. Especially, uh, definitely want to support, make this show in particular expand just beyond the setup that I have right now, which is in the works. So stay tuned. But um, again, hope everyone enjoyed the recipe. Um, be sure to comment. Let me know how you liked it. If you made any changes, I would like to hear those changes that you made. Maybe I'll try it myself. And as always, uh, stay tuned, stay alert. Remember, you are the movement. Keep them kitchens clean. <laughs> Have a good night.